This is William K. Mer, Tom Mert Witness 1. And this is day 77 of Phil McConnell in jail. And today I'm briefly going to discuss the House on the Hill. And the House on the Hill, in this case, is Phil McConnell's residence in Pierce County, Wisconsin. Now, there's a couple of interesting things about this house that when you go through the records that I obtained, paint a rather curious story when it comes to the current and past owners of this house. Now, the first buyer you see on the sheet is a bank. And the bank got the house from the county sheriff. Now, since this is around the time the house was originally built, uh, this might be something that's rather routine to have a county sheriff sell a newly constructed house to the bank. But, at any rate, that's what happened. And then, from there, the house was sold to its original owners. And they kept the house for a number of years until Phil McConnell and his first wife bought the house. And They kept the house until the divorce. And then, as a process of the divorce apparently, the house got sold to Field for zero dollars. In other words, it was just a party transfer. And, and so it is that Field McConnell is the sole legal owner of the house. Other than the bank, of course. So this would indicate that Denise McConnell, sitting over in merry old England, doesn't have any ownership in the house. And in the event of any subsequent divorce, she probably wouldn't get anything. Rather curious development. But that's not all. From when I was looking through the documentation having to do with this house, it is showing that either currently or at one time there was a sex offender registered to that address. Now, ain't that something? Now, I'm going to try and track down how a listing for a sex offender got listed in a real estate report. This might cost me a little bit of money. But I am going to track this down to see what the details are of having a sex offender listed at that address. You know, and wondering who that sex offender is, how that sex offender came to be at that house, and when. Was it the original owners? Was it Field McConnell? No details. And I didn't bother to do what is necessary to get the listing. For some reason, when I took advantage of the report, the sex offender listing didn't show up on the final sheet. So I've got to recheck this and find out exactly how a sex offender came to be related to that property. At least according to the cover sheet of the real estate report. <coughs> 
But it would be kind of a curious situation if there was somebody living in that house that was on the National Sex Offender Registry. There are other ways of tackling this, of course, and that's what I intend to do. Now, on day 76, Phil McConnell got into his continued wild and weird theories about things blowing up in Kansas and other matters. Read a few quotes from the Bible, all that good stuff. So it was just not a routine. Now it's for Timothy Charles Holmes. Sir. Mr. Holmes, Seth, has gone out now a solid week without saying anything. No videos, no blogs, nothing. Um, his handlers have turned to repeating old stuff that has been out there for years. And that's all. It's just been kind of a dull week. And so it's getting to me that there's less and less new stuff to talk about as we go through the week. At least when it comes to Tim Holmseth and Field McConnell. You know, the days are just dripping by until the time when Field McConnell's going to find out if he's going to the state of Florida to answer for the charges that are against him. Cynthia Abchug has got a continuance in her court case until the 11th of February. And that's about it, really. It's just a big, fat nothing. And so you kind of sit here scratching your head trying to figure out what there is to talk about. Uh, Preacher Dan, he's doing his thing down in Fort Myers, or was. He's probably back home now, counting all his money and figuring out what he's going to do next. But he has learned how to live stream, which I thought he'd been doing. But apparently he's been recording the videos and then uploading them rather than live streaming. Much the same way as I do here. I record this stuff, edit it, and then up it goes into YouTube. So this is what's been going on all this time. Living, live streaming was just the next step. Uh, he's doing the reverse of me. I live stream first and then uploaded videos to, uh, to YouTube instead of the other way around. As far as anything else goes, there isn't much. Got the same nonsense going on, the same wild theories, people trying to figure out ways to scam money out of people. And, you know, the merry ground keeps going around, the wheels keep turning, and we just keep trudging forward. And we wait until the next shoe to drop. Now, we're getting close to the day of reckoning for Field McConnell. We're getting close to the day of reckoning for a lot of these people. These people are going on, doing their thing, blissfully unaware of what is going to befall them. The investigations are continuing. I know there are people out there that are getting impatient. They don't understand why this is taking so long. But this is the nature of law enforcement. They're, no, they're in no hurry. They know what they have to have, and they're getting it. And once they have all the evidence they need, and once they have what they need as far as invest, you know, tools and what have you to finally start prosecuting these people 
the arrest warrants will go out. And when they do, that's when you're going to realize just how vast and thorough this investigation has been. There's a lot of players involved in these various investigations. There's a lot of crimes involved. And there are multiple jurisdictions involved and multiple levels of law enforcement. And everybody kind of has to put their heads together to figure out how they're going to handle all this. You know, they're going to decide who has the strongest hand at the moment, and that hand is the one that will be dealt. And in this case, we're probably the first thing that's going to happen is Field McConnell is going to be dealt with by the state of Florida and the state of Wisconsin. Once Field McConnell is dealt with by the state of Florida, the state of Wisconsin will come in with their charge against Mr. McConnell for threatening a bank officer. And then around that time is when we're going to start to see other actions. As different law enforcement agencies throughout the country start to weigh in and get their piece of the pie when it comes to Field McConnell and those around him. But one of the things that's happening that's going to be to the benefit of everybody as far as those who will seek justice is that because the investigation is going so slow there are people that are overconfident and are relaxed thinking nothing's going to happen thinking that they've bitten the bullet thinking that they've gotten away with something and they're going to keep on doing their thing without a worry in the world the investigation's going to be forgotten brushed off as a rumor But, they're going to be in for a surprise when all of a sudden, the hammer drops. The arrest warrant start to be issued. Court dates start to be set. Trials start to be set. Jury selection. All of it. And then the likely conclusion, which is a conviction of one or more crimes. This is all ahead in the year 2020. And it is that that these people have to look forward to, even though they're not paying attention to it. For the justice community, the law enforcement community, is that slow and steady turtle. It goes on at its own pace, taking its time. While the hare might be in the hurry, the hare doesn't get there in the end. He gets tired. And it's the tortoise that will cross the finish line. And it is the hare that will go to jail. Kind of a weird metaphor, but I figured, what the hell. At any rate... This is William K. Murtaugh, Mert Witness 1. Have a good one.